So you've just received a huge amount of dodgy money that you'd like to use. Cleaning or laundering money is the process of taking that dodgy money and putting it through some kind of system and having some spendable money on the other end. Well, Steam is a pretty good place to do that because it takes a reasonable cut, it can be relatively anonymous and it's international. So step one is make a game. Everyone these days wants to make a video game. Truth is, it's not actually that hard, and if you can't do it, chances are your scope is way too big. Instead of developing the next mega hit, we're going to strive for something a bit more feasible. Download Unity or Unreal. Unreal is great because it has a visual scripting if you want to code without thinking you're coding. Then go to gameassets.com, otherwise known as Kenny Assets, and treat yourself to something nice. I'd go for this set of cars and maybe a couple of things from this graveyard set. Open up a Bracky's tutorial, and follow along and within about 30 minutes you'll have something that looks like this oh nah, wrong wrong footage uh, i mean this uh, change the cube to a car and the other cubes to random obstacles and you're almost ready for step two. However, there is one mandatory step in money laundering that is wishlisting my game Fish TDX on Steam. It's been in development for a few months now and the Steam page has actually just gone live. It takes literally five seconds to wishlist it and it is a massive support for my development. And if you do wishlist Fish TDX, then I won't report you to the IRS. Step two, selling your game. People don't appreciate fine art anymore. We live in a society where if you release a game like this, it only gets a few sales. So let's make those purchases worthwhile and price the game at $200. Pricing the game any higher would raise far too many eyebrows. But we don't need players to buy our game. We have all of this dirty money so we can buy it for ourselves. We also don't want to sell too many copies to one account, so you'll need to employ people to buy the game for you with your money. These people are called Smurfs, and they're great for getting menial tasks done for cheap. Plus, their houses are delicious in a carbonara. You can pay these Smurfs to log into Steam accounts that you found on the dark web and purchase the game with your money. Just make sure those purchases aren't traceable, ha 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 ha. They should be using different bank accounts, VPNs, and pretty much any tool imaginable to obfuscate the data. Step three, withdrawing the money. Now you're a successful indie developer and with a phenomenal game with some raving reviews, you're free to spend your hard earned money on anything you like. You could even reinvest it into more crimes, go nuts. But before we take that money out, we do need to make sure it is as far from your name as possible. It should be listed under a meaningless developer and publisher title, and the address behind the developer profile should in no way lead back to you. Chances are, the agents who eventually start hunting you down are pretty competent, and the most common mistake in money laundering is taking the money and spending it right away. So, withdraw that to a dummy account and slowly find a good way to take that money into your own account. It's not easy and it can take time, but it's all worth it after you've purchased your fifth yacht. Trust me on this one. Not that I've done it before, Four, don't be silly. <laughs> As with all money laundering tactics, you do end up losing a fair bit of money to pay for smurfs, taxes, and other avenues like Valve's cut. In this messed up world we live in, a man making an honest living cooking methamphetamine in the desert can't even enjoy the money he makes. So these money laundering tactics are a life hack for those who want to indulge in our capitalist society. Valve's cut is 30%. Hiring, opening accounts, and getting important people to look the other way would likely end up as about 15%. So overall, you've got a loss of about 45%. There's also a lot of potential for automation. You can always hire a basement dweller to create a bot that does most of these steps for you, but oftentimes they only accept payment in Reddit karma and old computer parts, which tends to complicate things. At the end of the day, these things only have one rule, have fun. The real loser is not the person who goes to jail, but the person who doesn't love what they do.